Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the spine kinematics, okay? That is the movement around the spine. Last video was about the ligaments of the spine. So this video will be focusing about the what are the movements that occur at the joint. And then we will see what are the factors that affect the movement. So let's start with the topic. So first, where does this movement occur? Obviously, the movement occurs at the joint. And what are these joints? The interbody joint and the zygophysial joint that we talked about in the last video. Now, what are these movements? The movements that are occurring at the spine are flexion, extension, lateral flexion and rotation. Now, the movement varies according to the region of the spine. That is, basically in lumbar region, we'll have more of flexion. Then in thoracic, we'll have more of lateral flexion. And then in cervical, we'll have more of rotation. So it keeps varying according to the region of the spine. And this happens for a certain reason that we will explore as we go ahead. And then going to the coupling part. What is coupling? So coupling is basically association of one motion about its axis. So if you take rubber, it's moving around its axis like this. So this is the one movement that is occurring and coupling that movement with another movement that is maybe going ahead. So the rubber goes ahead with the rotation movement. So that is basically coupling of two motions. So in spine, what we see is lateral flexion and rotation is a very commonly seen coupling movement that is with lateral flexion, rotation always occurs. So that was about the movements. We'll discuss about these movements in more detail in some time. But before that, first let us see what are the factors that affect this movement. So there is basically the orientation of your articular facets, then the elasticity, fluidity and thickness of your disc. Then also the extensibility of your muscle, that is how tight or how lax the muscle is. Then extensibility of your ligament and also the extensibility of the capsule. These are the factors that affect your motion at the spine. But majorly the two factors that we are going to look over here now are the disc and the facet. So starting with the facet, the facet is the one which decides the direction of the movement that is going to occur. So direction is decided by the orientation of your facet. Let us see how. So this orientation of facet changes from every region to region. So basically we'll see how this happens. So first taking that if the facet orientation is in sagittal plane, the major movement occurring in that region would be flexion extension. So for that, let us take lumbar spine and see. So if you take lumbar vertebras and look at the facets, See, this is the facet, right? It's more in the sagittal plane, correct? If you see its facets, it's more in the sagittal plane. So the movement that will be occurring will be in the sagittal plane. That is flexion extension, right? Because the orientation of facet is in the sagittal plane. Then if you take the next one, that is the frontal. If the orientation of the facets is in frontal plane, the movement that will be occurring will be lateral flexion. So for that, we'll take thoracic vertebras and see. So if you take thoracic vertebra over here, I remove this one. If you see the orientation of the facets, it's in the frontal plane, correct? This is the anterior side, this is the posterior side. So it cuts, the plane cuts the vertebra into anterior and posterior part, right? So it's in the frontal plane, that's why the movement that will be occurring will be lateral flexion, correct? It's in the frontal plane, the movement will be occurring in the lateral flexion direction. So this is the predominant movement that occurs in the thoracic spine. And if you take the next one, that is the transverse plane, this is seen in the cervical area. So I take the cervical vertebras over here. And if you see the orientation of the cervical facets, it's in the transverse plane, right? This is very fascinating because see how the orientation of facet keeps changing along with the region of the spine. And that's why the movements are so different at different regions of the spine. So if you see the facets are in the more of a transverse plane, that's why the rotation at the cervical region 
is a predominant movement right so i hope i made it clear how facet orientation determines the movement that is going to occur in the region of the spine right now let us move on to the disc so disc tells you the amount of motion okay the amount of motion that is going to occur and this is determined by the size of the disc the bigger the disc more movement will be occurring and the nucleus in the disc it will act like a pivot so if i take my lumbar vertebra over here again i'll keep the disc over here and over here so see lumbar vertebra will have more movement to take place compared to if there is no disc right so this disc helps in increasing the movement and also the nucleus over here it will act as a pivot for your vertebras to move on top of one another okay so with that we cover the facet and disc how they improve the movement now let us move on to the actual actions that take place or actual movements that take place at the spine and we'll talk about the flexion extension lateral flexion and rotation in more depth okay so talking about the movements at the spine first we'll start with the flexion extension so flexion is over here extension is here so flexion there is basically anterior tilt and glide of the spine okay so let us take the lumbar spine over here because this is where the orientation of facet is in the sagittal plane right so flexion extension is more predominant so during flexion the body will tilt anteriorly and will glide anteriorly so that will be the flexion movement forward movement and the intervertebral foramen the size will increase so intervertebral foramen the basically the, it is a space which is present between the vertebra over here if you can see the space is the intervertebral foramen right so when there is flexion occurring there is flexion occurring this intervertebral foramen the space between them increases so that is what i have mentioned here increase in the intervertebral foramen and the anterior annulus is compressed now again we will need disc over here so this is the disc and when there is flexion occurring this is the annulus fibrosis right the anterior part of the annulus fibrosis so when you are doing flexion this will be compressed over here and in extension whatever we are talking over here exactly opposite thing will happen so talking about the resistance the resistance to flexion is provided by your spinous ligament now we have discussed in our previous videos how your interspinous ligament helps in preventing excessive flexion right hyperflexion so the resistance to flexion is provided by your spinous ligaments that is the interspinous and supraspinous ligament then also the capsule also ligamentum flavum which connects the two lamina then also the posterior annulus fibrosis the disc is connected to the vertebras right so the posterior part of the annulus fibrosis will also give the resistance to flexion and also the posterior longitudinal ligament will prevent flexion now in contrast to this there is the extension which is exactly opposite so over here the vertebra will go posteriorly right so so i take the vertebra like this so during extension there will be posterior tilt and posterior glide and there will be reduction in the intervertebral foramen right because it's going backward so this foramen will reduce and the posterior annulus is compressed exactly opposite to this and the resistance over here will be provided by your spinous process because they'll come in contact right not the spinous ligament but the spinous process right the hard and feel then also there will be resistance by anterior trunk muscles correct because they are on the anterior side so exactly whatever structures are present on the anterior side this time will be giving the resistance then also the anterior longitudinal ligament which we talked about in our last videos right so anterior longitudinal ligament if you saw it had a deep and a superficial layer and it is a very thick layer it was providing a lot of resistance and this is the only reason why this ligament is very strong because it's the only ligament that provides the resistance to extension that's why it's very thick because it's the only ligament okay now going to the next part that is the rotation now rotation is always coupled with lateral flexion we'll come to lateral flexion little bit later but first talking talking about the rotation it again depends highly on the facet and also varies from region to region because uh, the facet orientation is very different right so the rotation is very variable that's why we'll talk about this more when we are talking about the 
region wise vertebras right so basically rotation is very variable that is something you need to keep in mind and always occurs uh, as a coupling motion with the lateral flexion right so going to the lateral flexion lateral flexion consists of lateral tilt some amount of rotation that i just mentioned and also translation so for this let us take the thoracic vertebra so as i mentioned before the thoracic vertebra is in the frontal plane the facets are in the frontal plane right so this is why the lateral flexion is very commonly seen so there will be lateral tilt of your vertebra lateral tilt and along with lateral tilt some rotation will also be occurring and also some amount of translation right some amount of translation will also be occurring so here the intervertebral foramen that we talked about over here this intervertebral foramen what will happen to that it will increase on the opposite side and reduce on the same side so as you see this is the foramen right over here so if i do lateral flexion on this side what will happen the foramen will reduce on the same side correct it will reduce on the same side whereas on the opposite side because it has opened up it will increase so the foramen will, will increase on the opposite side whereas it will reduce on the same side that's what i mentioned the intervertebral foramen increases on the opposite side whereas it decreases on the same side and the annulus compresses on the same side because again this disc is pretty big for thoracic but if you just imagine the disc is present and if it bends if it lateral if if it does lateral flexion what will happen it will compress on the same side of the flexion whereas it will get stretched on the opposite side of the flexion as it is attached to the vertebras right another thing i wanted to discuss was about the relevance of what we are studying so what did we see we saw that flexion it increases the uh, foramen space right and extension reduces it and then lateral flexion what it does it reduces on the same side and increases on the opposite side why is it important to us so this is important because if a patient comes to you say with a radiating pain in the neck region or in the thoracic region so what is the first thing that comes to your mind a radiating pain means nerve is most probably involved right and these nerves pass through this foramen that we are talking about so when you ask the patient to do lateral flexion and if he does lateral flexion on the right side and if the pain on his right side increases that means the foramen over there reduced and that caused the increase in pain so this is how you can correlate your biomechanics in your clinical part okay so this we will be studying in more depth in the assessment part of your orthopedics but still i just wanted to introduce you to these concepts so that you can develop the interest and uh, see the importance of what we are studying again if you are doing extension and if there is increase in pain we most probably think about a facet joint problem whereas if you ask them to bend and if there is increase in pain we'll think about disc especially in the lumbar region because when you bend forward the disc might bulge outward and press your nerve and can cause the radiating pain in your leg typically a sciatica pain right so with that we finish off this topic now let's summarize so we started with the movement where does the movement occur interbody and the zygophysial joint we saw the movements that is flexion extension lateral flexion and rotation right then we also saw what are the things that affect the movement at the spine that is disc which increases the movement then there is the facet which tells the direction of the movement then the muscle ligament and capsule which provide more of resistance and stability to the movement right then we went to the movements uh, the flexion extension lateral flexion rotation and we saw more about them so on the flexion we saw the vertebra moves anteriorly it tilts anteriorly and glides anteriorly whereas in extension it glides and tilts posteriorly the vertebral foramen increases on flexion whereas it reduces on extension and on lateral flexion what happens it increases on opposite side and reduces on the same side then we saw there are different structures on the posterior aspect like the spinous ligament ligamentum flavum posterior annulus and posterior longitudinal ligament which resist flexion whereas extension is resisted by the structures which are present anteriorly like your uh, anterior trunk muscles and anterior longitudinal ligament and apart from that one posterior structure that was spinous process which was also providing resistance then we saw rotation 
which is highly dependent on the facet and the region to region right and it also is involved in lateral flexion as a coupling motion and then finally we saw in lateral flexion this lateral tilt occurs along with rotation and translation and the intervertebral foramen increases on the opposite side and reduces on the same side and the annulus gets compressed on the same side and gets stretched on the opposite side so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video